Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm Drew. And we are back with another review for Let's Table It. Today we're taking a look at Four Gardens. This is a two to four player game published by Arcane Wonders. And designed by Martin Dolezal. Let's take a quick look at how it plays. In Four Gardens, your goal is to create stunning panoramas by gathering resources and building landscapes around the majestic pagoda. The pagoda is key. Use your cards to rotate it to gather resources like water, stone, wood, and grass. But plan carefully. Each tier gives you different resources, numbers of resources, and each card determines the direction you can take resources from. Plus, you only have limited storage space, so timing is everything. Once you collect the right resources, you can build parts of your landscape by using your cards to deliver them. Completing landscape cards earns you points on the track of the matching color, but watch out for your opponents, they are doing the same. And if they get to the end of a point track, they might be able to move you backwards and even off the track. When you complete a panorama, you'll unlock special abilities like extra storage or resources to get ahead. The end game is triggered when a player has completed a specified number of landscape cards for the player count. The player with the most points from the completed panoramas wins the game. So Drew, what did you think of Four Gardens? You know, I've come around a lot on this one. Um, the first play, I was just, things were not matching. Um, I don't know what wasn't clicking, but it's it's really a fun game. There's a lot of puzzle to it um, in how you're choosing which cards to play, what actions to play on each card, um, or activate, I should say, and just kind of that, that collection, that set collection. It's It's got a lot going on. Yes. Really. Yes. I think when you first see Four Gardens on the table, you think it's going to be this light, gimmicky, mm -hmm. easy game that you're just going to slide right into and not have to think about very much. <laughs> but yeah. it is super thinky. The action selection of first, or not the action, the resource selection of first turning that pagoda and then only taking from one direction and you have wow. such a limited amount of storage that you have for those resources it really makes you think about oh, yeah. how you want to get that accomplished and then um the multi-use cards mm -hmm. we all know i love a multi-use card and so sometimes you can um get a resource for free and place it on one of your cards or you can deliver all of yeah. your resources you can lay that groundwork down or you can, um, again, turn that pagoda and gain resources. And so there's a lot to think about in what you're going to sacrifice because maybe you need this card to complete the landscape, but at the same time, you really would like to take the action that's on that card. Mm -hmm. And so where where does that decision lead you? It, it can be kind of fraught sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and that was just it. I, I came in thinking, oh, well, it's a cute little game and Oh, you're making landscapes. So, you know, okay, what is this? Takedo Plus? Yeah. So, you know, and no, it's not. It's, um, there's a lot of decisions. And um, part of it, too, is you're trying not to, you're trying to set up a little bit, not just for this turn, but hopefully mm -hmm. the next, by how everything's turning. You don't want to turn something away from you just to get a different resource and then have that bite you later on. Mm -hmm. It's, there's, there's a lot to it. Yes, so. agreed. I did appreciate that when you uh, build that pagoda, it's going to be variable. Mm -hmm. So every time um, you're going to have different resources on different levels of that pagoda, the ones in the middle are going to be your oh, hardest yeah. ones to get. And so I think that's really, I really appreciated that that was going to switch out every game. So you couldn't just go in thinking, oh, well, I, I'm going to need to stock up on rocks automatically because... Yeah that's what's going to be hard to get. You have to kind of think about that a little bit. Yeah. Too. And, and I can definitely say this is going to be, you know, light to midweight, you know, in that area, just because gameplay, I don't think is hard as far as how it works, mm -hmm. but being good at it and making the right decisions is the harder part of this. Yes. Agreed. So um, on the negative side, it, it can be a little mean. 
Yeah. Um, when you're drafting cards, um, we ran into one situation yes. where it was only about halfway through the game, and we realized that there was one card that wasn't in the deck at all anymore. Drew yeah. had taken all of them, and um, not on Un- purpose. Unbeknownst to me. Yes, and that was one that I needed to complete a landscape, and it was just like, oh my gosh, seriously? Where are the rest of those cards? Yeah. They were nowhere to be found. Um, also, when you're scoring, um, the seals that you're scoring in your landscapes, if you get to the end of a track and gain more, you can actually push people off the track. Mm-hmm. And once they're off the track, they can't get back on. Yeah, And so that, that can be a little bit mean. Yeah. Well, and some of it, you know, like I said, it's, it's definitely that feeling of, you know, not hard gameplay, but hard to master. I really like that because... If you want to really go at it hard, be you know the, mm-hmm. the two of us. But this is a game that I think again your upper elementary will oh, yeah. easily grab. Yeah, it says ten plus. I think I think our son who's eight, at eight yeah would be able to. He might need a little bit of help, but I think he'd he'd be able to play yeah. it again. It's it's the actual mechanisms aren't hard. It's choosing which one is mm-hmm. best for the situation is going to be, and it, that's. That's a to me a really good sign of a game is that, you know, it's not hard to to figure out how to play, but to figure out how to win, mm-hmm. that's a different story. Yes, I definitely see Four Gardens as a game that we will be able to pull off the shelf on a weeknight um, when it's we we don't have a lot of energy to mm-hmm. invest in a game, but it's a shorter playtime. It's super easy to set up, and the rule set is simple enough that um, we're not going to have to review it. But at the same time, it gives us those crunchier decisions yeah. that we we want in a game, um, just not with all the extra stuff around it with the setup mm-hmm. and the rules review and everything. Like and that. I was I was really surprised because when you first take a look at it, you think the setup's going to be mm-hmm. a lot there, and it's just it's quick set up the tower, get yes. the you know, card shuffled and and dealt. And on the first play, you have going. to invest a little bit of time in building those pagodas and getting everything organized. It actually has a really nice organizer also yes. inside the box, which I always appreciate. Um, very intuitive as to where everything goes, yep. and um, it just makes it setting setting it up a breeze. Yeah, and again. Um, you know, not not a brain burner, but a fun little challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's like you said, of that forty five minutes, that thirty to thirty minutes to an hour is a really nice for that light to medium weight. Um, you feel like it's long enough that you can actually build mm-hmm. a bit of what you want to do, and at the same time, it doesn't overstay its welcome. Yes, agreed. Thank you to Arcane Wonders for sending us a review copy of Four Gardens. As always, all thoughts and opinions are our own. For more board gaming content, make sure you're subscribed to Let's Table It. And if you want to follow our family's day-to-day gaming adventures, you can find us on Instagram at Sarah Always Loses. Thanks for watching.